this might be, this might be, this might be, and I I'm, and I'm not you know saying this um, I'm not saying this, you know, to be hyperbolic, but this legitimately might be one of the most embarrassing clips I've seen in my entire life. Embarrassing for all the wrong reasons. Embarrassing mainly for Brian Callan. So big up the fire and the kid, um, guys, for uploading this clip. It features Brian Callan talking to these two other comedians and they're basically calling him out for stealing one of their jokes. It's pretty cringe. I really do advise you, if you've got a pillow, to cover it. Cover your face with it. Obviously not too close because you might suffocate and die. But I really do implore you to sit back and check this clip out because this might be the most embarrassing thing I've seen in my entire life. Let's play the clip. Yeah, you've been doing my bit for a year. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I want to apologize. <laughs> Jesus I'm doing, Christ. this is the bit I would do. I didn't even know. What, this is literally my bit, okay? I'd be like, I don't do cocaine anymore. I did cocaine and I was literally woke up. I was, I was coming up with ideas for businesses. I was like, looking at my friend. I was like, let's start, let's open a candle shop, which is, I think, is word for word your joke. <laughs> wait, I want, hold on, you tell me what it is. But then, wait, this is my joke and I go, We'll open a candle shop, but wait, we'll, we'll sell huge candles, like massive ones, because if you own a castle, where are you going to go to get candles? And it's funny, people like it. For sure. Now, and then you ended it on that super physicality. Yeah. Right? And, and First of all, that joke wasn't even that funny. Second of all, the fact that you need to steal that joke and it's not that funny says more about you, the stealer, than the person who wrote that joke originally. You heard what I said? Number one. That joke wasn't even that funny. The fact that you had to steal it says more about you than the person who originally wrote that joke. And catch this as well. For everybody out there who I doubted, again, people on the internet are so, are so perceptive. People in the chat, people in the Reddit. People were saying from the get-go that Brian Kellen looks like a cokehead. And I didn't believe it because, you know, I've been around them, right? I may have dabbled in the stuff myself and I know what they look like. And he never looked like someone like that. But now it's making sense because who else? Why are, you, why are you making Coke jokes if you don't do Coke, right? It doesn't make any sense. So clearly, you know, a lot of these guys are into the devil's dandruff. Fair enough. But the joke isn't even that good and he's stealing it. This goes to show you the level of creativity, the level of artistry in the comedy scene at large is, you know, is nil, is non-existent non-existent that's why in my opinion i think stand-up comedy is probably one of the lowest form one of the lowest forms of art out there or entertainment it must be one of the lowest because it's the easiest barrier to entry really for the most part um but it's also got the most people who are probably quite crap doing it <laughs> you know the only other industry i can think of where there's a lot of people who do it and it's also terrible might be DJing, and that's another field that I'm interested that I'm involved in. I think DJs might be the only industry where it has a, a a ton of people doing it who are terrible, but they're making a lot of money. And I think the same goes to fucking stand up comedy because these guys are fucking horrible. Uh, so crush <laughs> crushing it for I probably did that bit for at least seven eight months. Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead. You don't. Owe I me had anything. a dream, and I go because Mike and I used to do the road together, and I go. I think Mike. I. Pick yeah, big up Owen, appreciate you. Picture, I saw you doing the bit, and I go, oh, Mike, there's a bit about cocaine and candles. Yeah, cocaine, yeah. What is the joke? It, you took two of my bits, and you combined them, and they're in the same section. But I'm not even mad. I think Callen's such a great performer. Go ahead. Yo, I'd be let's pissed. call it a, I yo, stole it. <laughs> yo, let's call it a tribute. Word for word. If I had recorded that, it would have been so I'm not even mad is always something that someone says when they are actually mad. I'm not even mad is always something someone says when they're actually mad. So bad, people would have been like, look at this scumbag, which is why you can't, if you have funny friends, don't watch them too much. No. There's I mean, no such thing as a cover a comic. Band. There's cover bands, but not cover comics. Well, there is now. Apparently. Yeah, no, 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 That's sir. That's pretty cool. No, my my bit started out with, you know, with, uh, you ever talk to somebody on cocaine? They always want to start a company with you. Oh, God. Right? Great mm -hmm. joke. Yeah, then we start rolling. Is it, though? Is it, though? Is it though? Is that kind of joke a joke you take on stage? Or is that not the joke that you'd share with some people over the grill? Or when you're at the bar? Or over a text message? Sometimes there are jokes that you write on Twitter or there are jokes that you write in a group chat that bang in a group chat. But you don't take them on stage. Guess what? Isn't it funny when you're on drugs 
and you want to start a business with it's like what like huh huh Going into like they start a company that it ends up becoming like commercial real estate, you know, and then I then I transition into let's start a candle company. So, you know, well, listen, that's, Brian, that's your joke, a, bro. There, there's yeah. a chance that's you your didn't joke. take it. You know what? Take what? the castle with the big can can I have the castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can have the castle. Thank you. Nice. Because I like that addition. It's a good. It's a good addition. So, it's a great addition. I was just working. How on did you find out he was doing it, or did you tell? No, him? I, he called me. Oh, okay. I, it wasn't no on a special. I or probably saw that bit. I mean, back in the day. Of course, Brian called him, right? The consummate cuck, in it, right? He's fucking butthole side clenching, and you obviously called him. Hey, 45, 45 times. times. Yeah. And, and, and so for it's me, I was bits. like, oh, I, it's one of your top bits. I'm known for it. One of my good friend's top bits. I'm doing and getting great laughs. Damn and it. And it was a straight up, I mean, it, there's no way to hide that. I uh, my subconsciously stole that, which means subconsciously I'm a thief and a bad guy. Well. I would imagine your subconscious only steals jokes when you're not writing jokes. I'm sure if you're doing stand-up and you watch enough stand-up, there's a part of you that sometimes can internalize people's jokes and you can sometimes rewrite them. But if you keep writing, if you're always writing new bits, most likely you're not going to always do that because there's so much stuff that you want to say anyway of your own. But the fact that you don't have anything inside of you probably is a reason why when you watch somebody doing stand-up and they've got a great joke that you like you internalize it and then copy it because you don't have anything that goes to show that you're not writing and again it goes to show that these guys they talk about how much they work and how much of a road dog they are and that they're all beasts and killers but the bare the bare minimum to do stand-up for me personally and this is something that i'm going to say here boldly because this is something that i wear proudly as a badge of honor even though it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? I've got a whole library of mixes on my SoundCloud right now, right? If you go on my SoundCloud, I think it's soundcloud.com forward slash handsome black man, all one word, you'll find hundreds of DJ mix on there, DJ mixes that I've done, hundreds of hours of content. And I can guarantee you there's not a single mix on there that has the same track list. It's all new stuff. Every time I'd play, and again, this is me, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody in the, in the DJ world, right? In the DJ world, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes playing in bars where there's like one person. I'm sometimes playing for drink tokens. Sometimes I don't even get paid, right? Sometimes the promoter runs away and I don't get any money. <laughs> and I've traveled an hour there to go and play. I'm playing for four hours to nobody. My back is hurting and the promoter runs away. So I'm a nobody, right? But even me, I'm playing in bars where people are eating and they got their backs turned to me and the lights are all on. I will never play the same set twice, ever. So if you're a stand-up comedian and you're performing for 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, come on for fuck's sake. Give the people a show. Obviously perform some of your greatest hits, but most of it should be new stuff. Challenge yourself, man. Write something new. And these guys don't. They don't even write. They, they have a job as a podcaster that allows them to have a free schedule where they can do what they want, right? So you have more time to write. They can write in the morning. They can write in the afternoons. They can write in the evenings when their kids gone to sleep. They can write whenever they want. They can perform in the middle of the week, but I can't. Right? I have to maybe schedule it around my work, right? And they don't write jokes. They don't write jokes. Can you imagine they don't write jokes? They still they still jokes from other comics who are just like grafting as much as they are. It's like it's it's, it's actually incredible how much these guys don't write. It's absolutely quite incredible. And I'd go I'd go so far as say this. Please please let me know this. I think the only stand up comedians who actually write a lot are number one the ones who enjoy stand up and like the you know love the art of joke writing right there's some comedians who just love zingers they love to fucking you know rib on stuff love to talk about things and also comedians who maybe have deals with you know big distributors and stuff of stand-up comedy like netflix and amazon because it gives them a reason to write because they've got specials they have to kind of you know they have obligations you have to meet but i think most of these guys don't write that's my theory i think most of these guys do the bobby lee thing that's why it's probably a bit hypocritical for them to come out bobbly and say, oh, you don't write, you don't do a special. Because I think most of them would prefer just to kind of go out on the road and perform their greatest hits on autopilot, right? Burt Crash would probably love nothing more than to do a whole tour around the world talking about the fucking the Russian mob story or something. I, or the machine story. I bet you any money. 
if, if if a company came up to Bert and offered him a deal where he could do the machine story, you know, every <laughs> he could do a machine story world tour, he would take it. And I think most other comedians would as well because it's less work. Oh, I knew it. I, yeah. I still came in traffic. Together? <laughs> still came so in traffic. So it wasn't... Yo, big up Uche. What's good? I seen Stavros live recently and he made a point to do all new material even though he just dropped a special. Big up Uche. Yeah, Uche actually went to see Stavros actually. Big up Uche. And yes, this is why I love to hear because that's what you should be doing. Honestly. Because stuff like this, right? I'm not... I, I, I don't I don't I kid you not and I'm being honest I'm being honest if I go to see Stavros and he performs a new set like that this not nothing similar to what he did on his special I'm most likely going to see him again that will make me want to see you again when you're in town or maybe I might even travel to go see you because I know every time I see you you're going to be doing new stuff you're going to be trying out things you might have some new you might have you might um tweak the stuff you did before it's actually going to make me more of a fan of yours if you put in a bit of work, a bit of effort. <laughs> but these motherfuckers, they want everything handed to them on a silver plate. They want everything easy. Good podcast deals. They don't want a podcast for too long. Not too many guests. Not too many episodes. Not too many shows. On TV or anything like that. It was just on the road? No, just oh. on the road. Imagine if you saw it. By the way, what a great friend. I love that you called me. Yo, you know, Mike, I got a question. Knowing you ever, the answer. Do you ever do a bit about cocaine and starting a business and candles? I go, yeah, for like the last 12 years I've been doing that. We were together. It's one of my hitters. It's one of my bangers. It's on my special. It's everywhere. Honestly, can you imagine how embarrassing this is? Can you imagine how embarrassing this is to be fucking Brian Callen and you're resorted to the level of having to copy a fucking cocaine business fucking bit? This is similar to the Brendan Shaw uh, Bud Light joke, right? How about Bud Light? God, they messed up. Huh? Boy, they just didn't read the room, did they? They just, they don't know their audience. They had a mark that was like, yeah, we're just trying to get rid of that bro culture. It's not what we want to represent. Like, do you do not know who drinks Bud Light? <laughs> I don't see the problem with Bud Light, dude. I love Bud Light. Like, dude, people are so homophobic. Like, oh, you're drink Bud Light, turn gay? Get it out of here. <laughs> So everybody been fucking saying, dude, that Bud Light sponsored a tranny or some shit, dude. And uh, apparently it makes you gay. I'm like, the fuck, man? Been drinking Bud Light for fucking years, man. And I don't see how it makes you gay. It's not that you stole the joke. It's that you had to steal that level of a joke. You couldn't, you don't have the comedic brain, the creativity to make up that sort of joke. You have to steal that one. Come on, bro. Come on, brother. That makes you look terrible. That makes you look awful. You look like the worst. The Lions Den by Money Lion. We're Forget here with your the intro. boys, man. We're here with the boys. Forget your intro. We're at the Super Bowl. We're at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, is that play action that good? Yes. Is that play action that good think by Stafford? Think, no. Think of <laughs> I love how you pronounce the Super Bowl. But yeah, big up the Friday Kid guys. Appreciate all of them for always uploading these amazing clips. That's obviously the title. You can see it there if you want to check it out yourself. If you want to see it there, if you want to check it out yourself. But yeah, the creativity in the comedy scene is like a damn, you know, all time low. All time fucking low.